With me today uh, to discuss this burning issue here in Israel are the former commander of the Israeli Navy, retired Vice Admiral Eliezer Chayni Marom, former Israeli appointment to the Palestinian Territory Reserve Major General Eitan Dangot, and former commander of the Tel, Tel Nof Air Base, retired Brigadier, Brigadier General Relik Shafir. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me today. So, Chayni, I'll start with you. Why still volunteering to serve in the army? under such circumstances? I think that uh, serving the Israeli reserves is really a privilege for any one of us, those that, re that retired and those that uh, uh, ended their, their, their term. And uh, 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 reserves uh, service, especially in the Air Force, is a very, very important service. In the Army, 70% of the force of the military is based on reserves. And in the Air Force, uh, I think that more than 50% of the, the uh, flight crew members are coming from the reserves. And most of them are very experienced, and most of them are in a very, very uh, good uh, position to lead uh, aircrafts that are going to uh, combat operations. And therefore, I think that uh, if they give up and they don't uh, show up to their service, we uh, could be in a problem of uh, uh, the military force capability. So, Eric Shafir, I'll turn the question uh, straight on to you. What do you answer to that? Uh, and how much do you understand those who decide not to serve anymore under these circumstances, under this legislation by the government? Um, those who decided not to uh, uh, extend their volunteering service um, have done so because they believe that this government uh, uh, in its string of laws, which began with the one uh, taken uh, uh, this week, um, are driving towards uh, dictatorship. And this is against, this is a, a uh, regime change um, and a kind of a coup. And uh, those people do not want to volunteer under those circumstances. Remember that these are people who have spent the last 30 weeks in protests uh, every week and lots of activities. And while doing that, they also um, uh, go to their uh, respective units to fly and they've been called anarchists um, and all kinds of names. And they've decided that they don't want to serve anymore and volunteer anymore. Uh, it's a personal question. And um, I think uh, emotionally, one can understand why yes. they decided that they want to quit. But it's not just the pilots. It's a lot of um, units, including cyber including uh, high tech, including warriors from the commandos. So it's a, uh, I think, a, uh, a result of the fact that the government uh, did not heed the pleas of about 70% of the Israeli public to stop the uh, single-handed legislation and go through the, a reform yes. which is warranted uh, with uh, a wide, a much wider agreement within the public. Yes, Eitan Dangot, I'll turn it on to you. You served not only as a Kogat, uh, but as uh, the personal secretary to the defense minister. You know the army very well from within. How big is the problem? How big is the danger? I think it's a really a great or a deep crisis that we are facing. And it's not a question of refusal. It's not a question anymore. It's above it already. It's a question between the level of the political leaders to a main, call it a main group, but very important group that are looking at democracy as a part that they have to get some real answers translated, not to the laws that the government intend to do, and they are not responding by the government in the last uh, four or five months anymore. And the government is like going and driving the 
their car without looking to the sides, and it comes to a situation that pilots, doctors, that also create a danger for the health of the Israeli uh, nationality, a level of health about the, the last declaration, we are going to a, a coming to a point that we have to stop and to solve, because in my opinion, the main problem is that the main leadership from Bibi Netanyahu and a few other important ministers that has experience, they are not extremists, has to stop and to judge what they are going to do. And there is a lack of unity, above all, unity between the nation, unity in the army itself. But can you hear, you see the prime minister and the government, they do not stop. And I ask you about the damage to the army, because they don't stop. We see pilots and others, many reservists leave. Relic Shafir put it very straightly. Eliezer Maron put it very straightly. It's very open. There is a damage. We heard the chief of staff there is a damage begging to, be, to, to his people this for week. The, let's call it for the medium, what we call the operational level of the IDF and the readiness and its response to the threats around us, the, to the aerial uh, terror reorganize itself and looking. But in my opinion, it's the future of the Israeli army since the time that Israeli as Israel is established as a state. We are coming to a junction to judge whether this leadership is taking us to another type of uh, army, and there is no chance to continue as a country with such uh, an army. The only chance is to come back to the army that belongs to the nation and based on volunteer and other kind as it has been done 75 years. So China, I go back to you. Uh, you know, uh, th there was an agreement between each one of us, each and every one of us that came to the army. We serve. We have to serve. It's not, it, 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 you know, there is no other way. But we serve for a democratic and Jewish state, or Jewish and democratic. Yes. Currently, you hear Elik Shafir, there is a coup. It's not because it's, it's becoming less democratic. So why people keep on serving? The weapon, I'd call it the weapon of uh, not serving, of refusal to uh, uh, show up to a volunteering uh, service, is a weapon that you don't use, and it's a. Uh, I would call it with all the responsibility uh, WM, a weapon of mass destruction. You use this weapon when you are before being destroyed or uh, demolished. And this is not the point right now. Right now, the situation is that there is a legislation, a one-sided legislation, I agree, by, by the government, and it's not very good. But Israel is not going to become tomorrow morning a dictatorship. Israel is still a flourishing democratic country, and therefore, I call my friends, the pilots, I'm their friends, and I know many, many of them for many years of service do not use this weapon at this time. But Chinese, maybe if they don't use it this time, it will be Poland or Hungary or Turkey in no time. I don't think so, and I hope that uh, the government, and I'm calling also to the government, if you want to continue to legislate laws, you should do it under an understanding with the opposition. We want a country that is united. We want a society that is united. We want a military force that is united. And I think that this time, I understand very well the feelings, and it's more emotional than logical, of the pilots and the special forces uh, uh, units and I'm calling them, stay meanwhile in the military force. So let's turn on the, back to the pilot, Relic Shafir. You hear the words, I bet it's so hard for you know, many of your colleagues uh, to decide not to serve because you know, it's, it's not only defending the country, it's their dream, it's their life, it's their joy, it's what they're used to do. Um, but they feel that they had no choice. Do they really have no choice or it's too early, too preliminary as Chinese says? Pilot's DNA and I think also uh, special forces is to meet the danger or the threat before it, it gets home uh, across the border. And this is exactly what we're, I think we're, uh, uh, these pilots are doing in that the train of legislation that we see that is aimed uh, and actually uses Netanyahu's weakness by the extreme right and by the ultra-religious um, is actually used to, uh, I would say, Polonize and Hungarize Israel 
At the beginning, it was in a one shot, and now it's stringed along, as we see about 141 laws that are going to be enacted. Um, and the, the one that passed this week is just the beginning. And uh, I can understand the way those people uh, feel that they have no other choice uh, but to uh, uh, enact in that way. And maybe the government will decide that changing the regime should be done, if at all, uh, on a wide scale with the public, not just the opposition, yes. listen to the people, 70% of them opposed to the way the government is acting at this time. A fallout from this week's uh, turbulent events here in Israel with thousands of reserve soldiers announcing they will not show up for duty following the government's actions. And I would uh, like to continue our discussion with our panel of experts, Eliezer Marom, Etan Dangot, and Relik Shafir. Eliezer Marom, I go back to you. So what solution do you see to that situation? Because we're in a deadlock. The government decides, the government, the government decides passes laws that, as Relik Shafir said rightly, so 70% of the Israeli public oppose. What other alternative we have? The government had no choice because the government could not accept the uh, threat from the military service and therefore they had to legislate the, the law. But I think they should, they should have done it with a full agreement between them and the opposition and so to keep the unity of the uh, Israeli uh, society. But they didn't do so, and we are now so. stuck. And now you feel the hostility that walking in the streets of Israel, you feel yes. the tension. You see the faces. People are, are, are very, Absolutely. very upset and afraid of what's going to happen. Absolutely. From now and on, the only way to legislate bills that are dealing with changing the, 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 the legislation uh, system should be done only under agreement between both sides. If this will not be done, I think that what we are seeing here, this phenomena that we are seeing here of the refusal to uh, uh, show up to reserve service will be much larger, and this will affect the whole military force. I want to say one more word, if, 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 if I may, uh, to our enemies around us. Those that are looking at us, from Iran, through Syria, through Lebanon, through Yemen, and other countries. Don't be mistaken. Israel is not weaker. This is a show of democracy here. And the democracy of Israel is flourishing. And if you are going to use any, any, any uh, military force to attack Israel, Israel will have, you will see Israel united, and you will see Israel fighting you, just like it used to fight before this legislation. So, Aitan, go back to you. Uh, 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 we hear what uh, Elias Aron says, yet there is a damage to the army. Let's speak about that possible damage if legislation keeps on going, if more and more reservists don't serve, if pilots don't attend, if uh, uh, cyber people don't attend, if doctors don't attend, what will happen? First, I may say that the damage already has been done. And I'm not talking about damage of uh, being ready for the uh, alerts or the threats towards Israel. I agree with Johnny that we are in a high readiness. By the way, our enemies are clever enough to understand it, and they are giving us the timetable to be more and more uh, weak about what's going. Secondly, it will take years to correct what has happened till now. Because besides the reserve, you have the conscript. You have officers, you have soldiers, you have a kind of, how you would you look towards the, the chief of defense staff and his relationship with the political level? The answer is also, by the way, one day after they receive the law, and you accept to be, it will be a little bit lower, the atmosphere will be correct, you see another kind of laws, and extremists, people like Ben Gvi, Smotrich and other people from the Likud are making statements. They don't bring those people any kind of alternative. This is the only thing they have in their hands. And my thing is about your question to Chinese. I think that the only thing is to be serious now. People like Benny Gantz, Gadi Eisenkot, has to realize that they have to be now, not right, but to be clever enough, first of all, to stop 
to find a way to join to a group in the Likud. The ball is inside the Likud leadership, not those who are extremists. In the other side, you have people who are quiet, and this is quite surprised me that they're not taking any kind of a way to bring their opinions and to stop it and to try to build, to put their leg in the door. And first of all, we have to stop what is going on because this is the main thing we will take up here and the army is going to be changed. It's not going yes. to be the same model from Ben Gurion time. So, Eric Shafir, I will end up with you asking about the Israeli Air Force, your beloved Air Force, the best in the world, the best pilots, the best ammunition, the best uh, aircraft, etc., etc. What's the possible damage to it? I think we have uh, several weeks that this whole trend could change. The reason why we have a good Air Force uh, is generally because we are able to select the most suitable people to fly airplanes, and they've been doing it for many years, reservists uh, who come in on a one-day-a-week basis for 20 years. Those people are determined to protect Israel. And if the government is clever enough to uh, make amends with the opposition and start a reform, which is fine, on a wider level, then things could be rolled back with uh, a controllable amount of damage. Every day that passes when the government does not make a change, they inflict damage, not just to the Air Force and the military, but to Israeli society. And I think it is a good opportunity to call on the government. Uh, they have the leadership, they have, they have the majority. Please be clever enough not to destroy something that flourished for 75 years uh, by small politics. Hopefully they hear. Relic Shafir, Eliezer Chayni Marom, Eitan Dangot, thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us today.